The people of God are called into worship this morning with the 25th Psalm, the first 10 verses. In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not put me to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for, your Lord, for you, Lord, are good. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in his way. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful towards those who keep the demands of his covenant. Welcome, let us worship God who has a covenant with us. Welcome to the online service of the Fourth Avenue Baptist Church here in Ottawa, Ontario, the capital of the country of Canada. The leaders of our community are pleased to announce the return of in sanctuary worship according to the lifting of restrictions for COVID on Sunday, March 7th. 2021. The service will include all of the prescribed protocols to minimize the spread of the novel virus COVID-19. Those include separate entrances and exits, a registry of all guests, a no-touch giving and Lord's Supper, and of course, socially distant seating. The Facebook Live broadcast and the YouTube channel will continue for those persons wishing to join us online. Last night, um, a, a program that has been a part of the Fourth Avenue Baptist Church happened uh, at the Ottawa Seven-Day Adventist Church. For years, the two churches have come together to celebrate and to honor Black History Month with a Sabbath and a Sunday service. And this year is not an exception. Last night, that wonderful presentation from the Seven Day of Genesis Church was live on YouTube and it's still available by um, searching Ottawa Seven Day Adventist Church YouTube channel and looking for the program Hold On. In keeping with that theme, today's sermon and service is also on holding on, hold on. We are so grateful for the many gifts that God shares with our community, not the least of which is the gift of giving. And as we prepare our gifts this day, Hear 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 7 from the New International Version of Scripture. But since you excel in everything, in speech, in faith, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. We thank you, God. Let us pray. Today our prayer is from a famous woman, Maya Angelou, and the title of the prayer and the poem is Thank You, Lord. I see you brown-skinned, neat afro, full lips, a little goatee, a Malcolm, Martin, 
Du Bois. Sunday services become sweeter when you're black. Then I don't have to explain why I was out balling the town Saturday night. Thank you, Lord. I want to thank you, Lord, for life and all that's in it. Thank you for the day and for the hour and for the minute. I know many are gone. I'm still living on. I want to thank you. I went to sleep last night and I rose with the dawn. I know that there are others who are still sleeping on. They're gone away. You let me stay. I want to thank you. Some thought because they'd seen sunrise, they'd see it rise again. But death crept into their sleeping beds and took them by the hand. Because of your mercy, I have another day to live. Let me humbly say thank you for this day. I want to thank you. I was a sinner man living unsaved and wild, taking my chances in a dangerous world, putting my soul on trial. Falling down on me like rain because of your mercy, for because of your mercy will I die, I live again. Let me humbly say thank you for this day. I want to thank you. Amen. Join us now in singing our theme hymn for this weekend, Hold On, Hold On. Our scripture for today is found in the Genesis text, chapter 9, verses 8 through 17. Hear the word of the Lord. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal on the earth with you, and as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant I make between you and me and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, 
This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, God. And may it be a life and hope to our souls. Now, please join me in praying on the subject, Hold On, as we have our music ministry, Michael Asasha and Sharon Adams. You know, 10,000 years from now, I don't know, probably less, we're in this digital age of information and access, but in a while, people will try to explain the events of this last year or so, and each of those explanations will be from the personal perspective and place in the world of those persons or groups. It's the nature of human beings to explain and understand cataclysmic events. There will be political, social, and of course, theological explanations for the origins and outcomes of the pandemic, the social unrest, and the effects of the lockdown 
on the natural world. One of the cool things about the lockdown on the natural world is the reduction on carbon emissions that has reversed some of the effects of climate um, uh, change and also the number of babies being born even in zoos worldwide. So I'll be, I'd love to be around to hear how that's explained. Maybe if you leave us alone, we do our thing. I, you know, I don't know. But I, I believe that all of this is going to happen because, of course, we've done it before, us humans. Six or seven hundred years before the advent of Christ, when God's people were living in exile under Babylonian rule, under cataclysmic conditions, those people codified the stories of their faith. One of the great stories of the Hebrew people's faith is the flood story. Now, there is no doubt, or at least little doubt, that the world experienced a cataclysmic flood which destroyed most of the known world. And the reason several, several cultures wrote about this event. It is recorded in the Sumerian Eridu Genesis, the, in the Islamic Quran, and the Babylonian Epic of Gilgamesh to name only a few. They all chronicle a great flood narrative. Yet, unlike those of the Hebrew people who tell the story as a way of demonstrating God's faithfulness to humanity, and a time when God's world would return to normal, where summer will follow spring and winter will follow fall. Times may be tough, the narrative declares. It'll, it's hard right now. It's dark right now. Chaos is dominating the landscape. Pharaoh seems to be in charge, but better days are coming if we hold on. Hold on just a little while longer. Hold on just a little while longer. Everything gonna be all right. Everything gonna be all right if we hold on. So here at the end of this flood story is the first biblical covenant the first permanent, everlasting promise of God to humanity. This is huge. Maybe, maybe because it is so undeserved, completely random that God would do a covenant with the people at this point in history. You see, this covenant... <laughs> This covenant follows the demonstration of humanity at its worst. Having committed acts of violence and corruption which stepped on God's last nerve. You know, our mothers used to say, I'm, you stepped on that nerve that I was saving for when you got to be a teenager. No, humanity stepped on that one. And God had to do something completely unmentionable uncreate the world, uncreate the world. God, who is creation, God, who made the moon and the sky, God, who molded humanity in God's image, is throwing out the whole thing and starting over. Well, almost starting over. <laughs> Noah found favor with God. And I don't think we give that fact enough thought. I don't think we think about Noah enough, blameless and upright. Noah allows God to be God. No one else in all of Torah receives such accolades. 
Noah found favor with God. God's favor saved Noah and saved Noah's family. God's favor made Noah a major player in the rebuilding of the world. See, finding favor with God may not, as it seems, be such a bad spiritual goal. It does mean that we'll have to build a great ship and endure the scorn of our neighbors and family and friends, not to mention being responsible for the repopulation of the whole wide world. Uh, maybe I should rewind that. Favor with God, then responsibility, then work. Not work hard and find favor with God. Somebody, I woke up this morning hearing that somebody needs to know that you are working yourself to the bone and that is not how you find favor with God. You find favor with God and then God gives you work to do. Somebody online need to say amen or ouch. God's favor, that's a good thing, right? That, that's my point. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yes, it's absolutely a good thing. And in the end of all, God remembered and rescued those preserved in the ark. And remember, the only people in the ark were Noah and Noah's family, the one who found favor with God. God decided to forego the justifiable vindication and punishment to do humanity and chose instead <laughs> generosity, patience, forgiveness, and self-giving love. Now let's be clear, humanity has not changed. God wants to stay in relationship with humanity and the world. So God makes a covenant through Noah with Noah's descendants, with all living creatures on the ark and with the whole earth. The more incredible part of this, the part that absolutely should blow our minds, show us into a shout that allows us to just have to stop and pause for a minute is that this is a unilateral agreement. Meaning all the obligation is only on one side of the covenant partner, and that's God. God is bound. Humans are not. God is committed to humanity. God's fate is forever connected to the fate of humanity. God has limited God's prerogatives. God, the creator, is now also God, the protector. God will not allow chaos to forever reign. God promises to never, 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 never gather the clouds of war again. God has hung the bow as a sign that all creation can rest secure. Saints, we may see regret. We may see some regret from God, but we do not see anger. Humankind is hopeless. Hopeless. Creation has not changed. Hope depends on a move from God. God has resolved the trouble and grief God has experienced. Whatever happens after that is not due to God's anger. David Luce says it in this wonderful way. God cannot sit back oblivious to the fate of humanity as the Greek, Romans, or Persian gods might. God cannot sit back oblivious 
to the fate of humanity like the other little g gods. The bow in the sky serves to control God by reminding God of this fact. God in this text is changed and changing. God will stay connected with the created. Sorry, though we are. Wow. <laughs> wow. And it, and it was this reality. It was in the chaos, in the subjugation, in the confusion of exile that made the story of the flood an existential reality. Creation was not abandoned to its disobedience. Israel will not be abandoned in exile. In fact, quite the opposite happened. Humans were affirmed as made in the image and likeness of God and given a fresh new rule. Saints, we are not abandoned. We are not abandoned. We need not fear another cataclysmic event like the one depicted in the Genesis story. Humanity is not headed in a never-ending downward spiral of violence. This is not the end of God's creation. This is an inflection point. We have more to do. The flood story and the subsequent covenant from God is there to tell us to hold on. Hold on and hope for the rainbow after the storm. It's there to tell us to believe. Even in the middle of the worst storms of our life that a new tomorrow is coming. During the Harlem Renaissance, the poet Langston Hughes wrote of a time after the storm in a poem, I Dream. I dream a world where man, no other man will scorn, where love will bless the earth and peace its path adorn. I dream a world where all will know sweet freedom's way, where greed no longer saps the soul, nor obvious brights the day. I dream a world where black and white, whatever race you be, where share, will share the bounties of the earth and every man is free, where wretchedness will hang its head and joy like a pearl, attends the needs of all mankind, of such I dream my world. My brothers and sisters, let us join Langston Hughes in dreaming of a world that has a bow in the sky. You see, the rainbow, as we call it now, was intended as a reminder for God not for humanity. But by the grace of God, we who are frail and weak, we who lose sight quickly can see God's bow and know that God also sees that bow. And when God looks at that bow, God remembers God remembers everything we have ever done. God remembers everything that has ever happened. But God sets back God's prerogative and says, let them keep going. God extends God's grace and says, let's give them another opportunity to try. God releases any anger. God allows not the anger that should be hurled at humanity to even blossom or grow. And God says they don't deserve it, but I love them so much. 
I care so much about all humankind and the earth that I will give them another opportunity to hold on. Hold on just a little while longer. Everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. Let's pray. Gracious and holy God, we thank you so much for your bow. We thank you for the dark clouds that gather and when they separate, allowing us to see your bow in the sky. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. And we ask, Lord, that you would bless us with your favor, that you would bless those here today with your favor and that with that favor would come a job to do, a job to change the world, a job to make someone else's load lighter, a, a job to save and to set free. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Amen. And now unto him who is able who's able, who's interested to give you and show you faultless before the throne of God. Be all power, dominion, majesty, and glory, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>